Hey everyone, my name is Bridget and I'm joined today by The Blossom. Welcome. Hi. <laughs> Thanks for sitting down with me today. Where are you joining me from? Um, I'm in LA from my little studio apartment in South Pasadena. <laughs> awesome. And so when you say studio apartment, it very much is your studio, right? Yeah, well, no, it's a studio apartment, but it also happens to be my studio. Um, I have, I've been tracking vocals and recording and writing a bunch in my closet recently, um, which has been very effective and I love it and nobody bothers me and it's nice and cool and dark. So yeah, it's been my uh, creative space the last couple of months. Awesome. We love a double meeting. Studio, studio. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> awesome. So today is a big day for you. Your single Angel Fangs is out right now. So I guess we can just dive right into this track. Tell me about it. What was the process? What was the inspiration behind it? Um, so this track was like really on the fly. I actually wrote it, like I wrote the lyrics like while I was recording, like, yeah, I didn't have anything written down, um, which has only kind of happened a couple of times. Um, it's like, yeah, it was really uh, serendipitous. Like, honestly, um, my dad and I wrote it. Um, he produces some of my stuff and we've been collaborating like on the last EP. Um, but yeah, I had this guitar riff and then he played it out for me and then I just jumped on the mic and I had like, uh, yeah, a couple of lines and then, uh, we did like maybe three takes and then the last one, I was like, yeah, that's the one that we should use. Um, so yeah, it was like a really visceral song. It doesn't have a lot of production on it. It's really just like guitar and vocals. And then there's a few like vocal effects with auto tune and, um, some filters in that but it's just really raw like it's exactly what it is when it was recorded is kind of like when it was first recorded and tracked that's how it was now when it's released <laughs> so cool and I love that you collaborated with your dad on this is he with you in California no he's he's in Australia so this was like this I wrote this when I was in Australia when I was visiting my family back home um, yeah, he's a producer in his own right, and so he works with a bunch of, like, young Australian artists and developing artists, and he's a songwriter and stuff, so, yeah, I mean, we, we collaborate, like, really casually, like, when I'm back home, and I'll send him stuff, and he tracks, like, guitar on a bunch of my stuff, too, um, but, yeah, we have, like, a really cool, um, open, co collaborative sort of relationship, um, and, yeah, Angel Things was something that came out of that, um, yeah, it just started with like a really simple guitar riff that I had, and then he kind of elevated that a bit. Um, yeah, that was it. <laughs> That's so cool. I love that. Wow, love it. Keeping it in the family. That's very fun. Yeah. Awesome. So you've released a ton of music just since the start of this year alone. Your debut single, Kill My Mind, was out on March 13th, and then since then, you released two more singles and your EP, Bleeding Buttercup, yeah. on May 29th. <laughs> So were, were you sitting on these songs for a while or did you write them all during quarantine? Um, I honestly wrote them like within like six months. So wow. I kind of had like a bunch of stuff that I'd been developing and working on. Um, and then these songs kind of arose and um, arise, arose. <laughs> these songs came up and I'm pretty like uh I'm pretty like straightforward when I like really love something I was like yeah cool this is I it just felt like the right time I was like hell yeah I'm gonna release this and nobody was really waiting for it nobody like knows who I am and like it was just really perfect I just kind of put it out um and was able to really like get a feel for people and what they were feeling and what they were thinking and um, their whole vibe on my sound and it's been really overwhelmingly um, positive and cool um, so yeah it's definitely like the very early beginnings of a journey but I feel like um, the debut EP for me was like really an amalgamation of like exactly what um, my sound is and my next stuff is kind of like elevated from that but yeah it's very like bittersweet and a bit airy um, and my newest stuff is like a little bit more aggressive I would say um, but they have like this common, um, this common thread, which is like, uh, this bit of sweetness. It's kind of like happy, sad, happy, sad, happy, sad. Awesome. Yeah. So what was the process of making that EP like? Um, so some of the tracks I recorded, so some of the stuff I just did on my own and then some of the stuff I did with my dad, some of the stuff I did with a friend, Jessica Winter, um, who is an artist who's from the UK with Warp. Um, and she's really cool. And we wrote together and we wrote Boy Baby Blues together. Um, and it just fit in really well with the EP. And so I was like, yeah, I'm going to chuck this one in. But honestly, it was like kind of all decided like on the fly. Like 
I was recording and writing a bunch and then I would love one song and then I'd replace that song with like another song. And then I would love that song and then I replace the song with another song. That's kind of how I work. I'm kind of like really, I, I, I don't get like, um, yeah, I don't get like too pensive over it. I just honestly had a bunch of stuff that I really loved and I had been writing and working with for other artists um, before my EP. And so I was like, okay, right now it's time for me to put out my own stuff. And it felt really good. And yeah, I did it on my own. And um, it doesn't have like a huge, you know, it, it didn't go like viral, have like a huge streaming success, but it like putting it out within my community and having my friends listen to it and having it like really circulate amongst other people felt really good. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it felt super cathartic too. Like, yeah, for sure. What you're doing was worthwhile. That's awesome. Cool. Mm -hmm. well, I want to ask about the auto tune as well. Cause I, I love that in your sound. Just like what inspired you to use it and kind of go for that sound? That's a cool question because um, I love using autotune and um, there was this interview with Young Thug, um, I think it was like on The Breakfast Club, maybe, don't quote me on that, but he was saying how um, autotune like allows him to use melodies and go places with melodies that you usually, like you usually wouldn't as, you know, like usually wouldn't go to. And so um, I, a lot of, like a lot of stuff that I listen to has autotune on it, not as like a as a voice correction, but as like a full effect, like a full sound. A lot of hip hop, a lot of pop stuff that I listen to, a lot of, um, you know, uh, even alternative stuff I listen to. So I started using it um, for my writing and I would like switch it on before I write, you know, before I um, come up with a melody, I would just have like a beat or a guitar riff or whatever. I would switch the auto tune on and then just try a bunch of stuff. And I found that like writing with it, like took me to all these places rhythmically because you can do certain sounds and like um, pronunciations with your voice that sound really rhythmic through auto tune. And so I just like fell in love with it and I was obsessed with writing with it. So I just started using it heavily and becoming really comfortable and really knowing how to like use it because it's so mal it's so malleable and you can really like twist it and weave it and really like bend it into different melodies that you wouldn't that I feel like I wouldn't come up with otherwise. And um yeah, I like really I mean Young Thug's one of my favorite artists, so I was like, I'm gonna listen to what he says. <laughs> Awesome. Yeah. No, no, totally. It almost becomes like another instrument in a way. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Another instrument. Yeah. Also, I love that Young Thug is one of your favorite artists. Do you have any other types of inspirations that have, that have kind of inspired you in your musical journey? Um, yeah, a lot. <laughs> I love, um, God, like my favorite artists um, range from like Young Thug to Elliot Smith. I love the band Duster. Um, at the moment, I'm listening to this band called Lungfish that I really like. Um, I love The Cure. I love, um, oh, there's so many people. Um, I love uh, Lil Baby. Um, I love Playboy Cotty. I love um, a bunch of stuff. I don't know. Like I, um, I, listen to everything but I feel like I gravitate towards stuff that have this certain like um I don't know like to me in my head it's like really cohesive um and they all have like a, even though sonically they're different they kind of fold into each other maybe like thematically um which makes probably no sense and I'm just like <laughs> I'm just reeled off a bunch of artists but that's what the playlist that I made um for you kind of is it's like a it kind of, yeah, all, like lots of artists that are different, but to me, they have this cohesiveness and all of them have influenced my sound in some way. Totally. No, but I know what you mean. Like when you say it, it almost doesn't make sense. But when you listen to your music, it totally does make sense. Because oh, cool. Remember, yeah. Like listening to some things and feeling like, oh, there's a bit of 80s in here. So like what you're saying, yeah. like the, you can hear that totally. Yeah, I love a lot of shoegaze stuff, like my Bloody Valentine, um, Slow Dive, uh, yeah, like I listen to a lot of shoegaze, um, a lot of like slowcore sort of stuff, um, pop punk sort of stuff. Um, and then I listen to just like so much hip hop all the time and have for, yeah, since I was like a kid. Um, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, I love it. Well, and even mentioning the, the playlist you made, that'll be super exciting. After this interview, everyone can hear her special guest DJ playlist. Um, <laughs> I, I think, as you said, it definitely does create your sound with all of these different things coming together, which is super cool. 
And I know that you also grew up with um, between Sydney and New York. Do you think that that has had some sort of influence? Yeah, on that? for sure. I mean, um, growing up between those two cities, they're like polar opposites. Um, and New York is such like a rich connection, obviously, for hip hop being the birthplace of that genre. And I feel like um, the whole like city energetically has a lot to do with my personality and a lot of like thematically what I write about. Um, and then Sydney was just like a really beautiful, naturalistic, like naturey, uh, beachy place to grow up. So it's like really polar opposites of places that I've spent time in. And I think that both of them have, um, have an influence on my character per se when I'm making music and my sound palette choice for sure. Yeah. That's like kind of ethereal and airy and, and, uh, you know, uh, sort of pretty soft sounds mixed with like the more like harsher, thrashier, uh, uh, heavier sounds. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Like the edge of the city. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. That's awesome. <laughs> Cool. Well, next up, I'm going to play your new single, Angel Things, um, and that's out now. Um, yes. So now that that, now that <laughs> comes out, what are you looking forward to? Do you have anything that's going um, to Yeah, I'm going to keep on releasing a few singles, um, maybe another project next year, beginning of next year. Um, right now, I'm just like writing and collaborating with a bunch of other kids that are kind of like in the same sound sonic realm as me and just having... Yeah, just having stuff to sink my teeth into every day during this really strange, weird time, just continuing to connect with people, um, I think is cool. Um, and yeah, keep on writing a bunch of really sad, happy songs. <laughs> awesome, right, awesome. Well, that's super exciting. Well, The Blossom, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. Thank you, that was so much fun. <laughs>